Welcome to Empower Coaching. Empower Coaching combines mental and physical fitness to help you connect the dots to unveil a more confident, energized and empowered version of you. So if you're ready, let's get into today's episode. Hello and welcome back to Empowering You with Emma. Today's show, we're going to be talking about carbohydrates and how I managed to allow carbohydrates back into my life again. What a wonderful time this is for me. (laughs) Um, So this is part three of a four-part series, Food Matters. And if you haven't checked out part one and two yet, I can only recommend you hop back and have a listen to those two episodes as well, because they are very valuable. I I really believe that you will get a lot of information from them. So definitely recommend that you hop back to those at some point. But today, let's talk about carbohydrates. So if we skip right the way back, let's say 10, 15 years ago, I was definitely in a place where I really did not accept carbohydrates at all. I was one of these who had a view that carbohydrates were some evil thing that was going to ruin my life and ruin any goals and aspirations that I had for my health and fitness. I really had such a negative view of carbohydrates. Over time, obviously, with good education and experience, I have learned that those thoughts were rather irrational and actually carbohydrates are really not that bad and we need them. But it did take me some time to get over that, to understand that because there was at the time a lot of information in the media that led me to believe these negative thoughts surrounding carbohydrates. So it really has been a battle over the years to overcome those thoughts and to change my mindset around carbohydrates and to see them in such a positive way that I do now and to enjoy them as well without feeling guilty or anything like that. So as some of you may know, I did go through my own struggles with an eating disorder when I was younger. And so a lot of, I think, my relationship with carbohydrates stems from the back of that because I just didn't have a good relationship with food. I had very negative thoughts around it and anything that was being portrayed as not a positive type of food in the media, I would just pick up on that straight away. So I did suffer with bulimia and emotional eating. But again, if the, when I was trying to go through the recovery stages of this, if I was to see a type of food that was labelled as bad or stay away from, not good for you, then I would avoid that food completely and entirely. So it has been a battle over the years to be able to overcome that. And I'm just so glad that I have (laughs) because now I can safely say I love carbohydrates and I don't think there's one day that goes by that I would not want to have my daily dose of carbohydrates. So basically carbohydrate is a macronutrient. It's one of the three macronutrients. So you've got carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Now there are three main types of carbohydrates. You've got your starches, fiber and sugars. Starches are often referred to as complex carbohydrates. You might have heard of this. And these are found in grains and starchy vegetables like potatoes, and cauliflower, corn, that kind of thing. Sugars are known as simple carbohydrates. And, you know, these are natural sugars that you'll find in some vegetables, um, fruit, honey, and other natural sweet syrups as well. So carbohydrates are your body's main source of energy and they help to fuel your brain, your kidneys, your heart muscles, your central nervous system. So for instance, fiber is a carbohydrate that aids in digestion. It helps you to feel full and it keeps your blood cholesterol levels in check. A carbohydrate deficient diet may cause things like headaches, fatigue, weakness, 
difficulty concentrating, nausea, constipation, bad breath, vitamin, mineral deficiencies. So already there you're starting to build hopefully a picture of you know, why carbohydrates are so important for you. Now, I know that some people, um, particularly those who are on a diet and are trying to lose body fat, can often be attracted to a low carb diet because so much has been said about how it really helps with losing weight and losing weight quickly. And yes, there is some truth to this. Um, You know, it can certainly help aid you with your fat loss. Um, But it's not sort of the only way, but it does, there are ways in which it can help. Um, But I think one of the main misinterpretations that we have with carbohydrates and losing weight is how quickly the scales go down, is how people tend to focus too much on what the scale weight says, which as some of you may know already, doesn't necessarily reflect fat loss. Okay, so when you step on weighing scales each week, you're not just weighing how much fat you've got on your body. The number that's being shown to you on the scales there is a mixture of everything. So it's your bone mass, it's your muscle mass, um, your fat mass, it's, um, you know, how much food have you eaten already in that day? How much liquid have you got in your body you know, during that day. So it's a mixture of everything. Now, when you go on a low carb diet, one of the first things that you will see is a rapid loss in weight on the scales. And this is where people get tripped up because if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to lose fat, this is this is your goal, right? This is what you want to see. You want to see those scales going down. Um, but it isn't going down in necessarily the right way, okay? Yes, sometimes it is, but generally when it's happening so quickly because you've cut out carbohydrates, what's actually happening here is that the number that's being reflected is actually the water weight that you have lost. So for every one gram of carbohydrate, your body stores around three to four grams of water. So that's nearly triple the amount of water that you are storing for every one carb that you are having. So that's quite a lot. Now, that's good because we need to make sure that we are well hydrated and that we do have a good percentage of water in the body. But you can see that when you start to cut those carbs out, what's happening is you're also reducing the amount of water that's being stored in the body. And so that's why the scales go down so quickly. Let's say that you've reduced your diet by 10 grams of carbohydrates in a day. So that's nearly 30 to 40 grams of water that you're also losing, right? So you can see how it has an effect on the scales and how some people can misinterpret that information. Now, I definitely fell victim to this. So when I was partaking on my own weight loss journey all those 10 years ago, I, th- this is something that really tripped me up. And I, all I focused on was the weighing scales. I was so attached to the weighing scales. It's all I cared about. And so when I started to see that the scale weight was going down, I was absolutely over the moon. And I was like, yes, I am making progress. I'm smashing it. Um, but yes, only to, <laughs> only to realize that I wasn't losing fat and that it, it was mostly just my water weight that, that I was losing. Um, and so then what happened is I ended up becoming skinny fat. So when I did lose um, quite a lot of weight, quite rapidly, um, I was what we call skinny fat. So I didn't have a great deal of muscle mass in my body. I wasn't as well hydrated as I could have been, but I still had quite a high percentage of fat. So my weighing scales were extremely low in comparison to where they were, but my body fat percentage had actually gone up. So the difference between my body fat and my muscle mass was that I was actually now higher 
in body fat than I was in muscle mass. And that was just kind of like a kick in the teeth, to be honest, because I really felt like I'd put in the work that I'd, you know, reduced my calories. I'd gone through all this hell and stress of restricting foods that I really wanted and, you know, saying no to a packet of rice. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I was I was in the extreme phase here. Um, and you know, I'd done all of this and I'd done all this great work, but my body fat was higher. And I was like, come on, really? Like, what has a girl got to do? So that was when I was at a point of just feeling really, really lost. And thankfully, I, you know, embarked on my fitness um, journey and I started to become educated. And, you know, this is where I'm at now. I've educated myself over the years. I've learned, I've understood how the body works scientifically and that's just been a great tool for me which is why you know I like to pass on this knowledge now. So then on the other side of this there's also when we experience a very rapid weight gain as well when we start eating carbohydrates so so when you've been on a low carb diet for quite some time and you've seen that weight just dropping off you might end up experiencing as many of us do when we try and restrict any type of food that you can end up having what we call, or what's commonly known as a cheat meal, where we cheat on our diet. And this will tend to be whatever foods we have been restricting, that's what we'll have. And that's why it's known as a cheat meal. We feel like we've cheated on ourselves. So if you've cut out carbohydrates and then you've included them back in on this cheat meal, what happens is obviously you've got that stored water again. So I don't know if you've ever done it yourselves where you've stepped on the scales the next day because you felt so awful and you want to know what damage has been caused and the scales have gone up by like three, four pounds in one day (laughs) and you freak out. So then what happens? You go back to restricting, sometimes even more so than you did before to try and bring that weight off. You take out the carbohydrates The water weight obviously then rapidly reduces off the body and you're then absolutely ecstatic that, you know, the damage has been reversed and you can continue with your journey of losing weight again. All while not really being aware that what's happening here is you're just shifting the amount of water that you are holding in your body. So it's almost like you're living a lie. (laughs) And that's an absolute killer when all you're really trying to do is be healthier, lose excess fat and do a damn good job at it. Now, I think the real turning point for me that allowed me to commit myself to have carbohydrates again was when I learned of the effectiveness of carbohydrates towards my very specific goals, which um, became strength training and still are to this day. So as we know, carbohydrates are the main source of energy for your body. And especially when it comes to things like uh, high intensity interval training, you know, strength training, resistance training, we need a good amount of carbohydrates to be able to provide the amount of energy that is required in those high intensity exercises. And because I just wanted to get stronger and stronger, and I still do, um, you know, I want to be able to push my body as far as I can within reason. That means that I am going to need to eat a decent amount of carbohydrates to provide me with that energy. For example, I could strut into the gym one day with not eating any carbohydrates and try and attempt my usual strength training workout and what I will discover is that I feel weaker, I don't have as much energy to push through the rep ranges that I might have been doing, the amount of weight that I can put on the bar will probably be a lot less and I will just generally feel more tired and weak and then what happens is I walk out the gym feeling frustrated because I've not been able to do what I am used to doing. If I go into the gym and I'm fueled right up on carbohydrates, maybe more than what I would normally have, and I go in to do my workout, what will happen is that I will probably be full of energy. I might even get an extra rep in there. I might even increase the weight and hit a PB. And this is really the difference between a high carb and a low carb diet 
when it comes to things like strength training. They are absolutely essential. Now, there will be some people out there who are going to argue this, you know, some people who are on high fat diets and and, and can still go into the gym and smash it. And there are some people who train fasted as well with with strength training. You know, I, I know some people who have actually been very um, successful in, in their workouts and have competed in, in bikini and bodybuilding competitions and their preferred way of training is fasted. Like it can be done, but I know what works for me and that doesn't work for me. In fact, if anything, I just find that that's more stressful and painful and I would rather enjoy my sessions because this is another key thing is that you have to enjoy your workouts. So that was the turning point for me with carbohydrates um, and it's kind of what I needed at that time. Now, I just know that I need it to fuel my workouts, but back then, it's like I needed that permission to eat carbohydrates. I had been drilled with information from the media about how carbohydrates were so bad for you they cause diabetes heart attacks um and yes if you're not sensible with the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating if you're eating a lot of refined carbs then yes the risks are, are greatly increased but this is where we can take the information and interpret wrong and we can often be scared by the headlines that we're seeing just an example, you know, the phrase no carbs before marbs, that was a that was huge. And the everyday person wasn't going to see that headline and then go and review and research where that headlines come from and why these celebrity influencers were saying it. They were just going to take the headline no carbs before marbs you know, look good in a bikini, don't eat carbs, right, so that must mean then that carbohydrates are bad for me if I want to lose weight and if I want to want to be slim. And so it's this lack of responsibility from the media and from certain celebrity influences that have unfortunately led a lot of people to believe that carbohydrates are bad and that they're wrong and that they're evil and it's just not simply the case. Now don't forget that this podcast is based purely on how I managed to overcome the fear of eating carbohydrates. It's it's got nothing to do with medical advice or intolerances so there will be some people listening who do have an intolerance to carbohydrates um, or who have been advised by a medical professional to eat a lower carb diet because of maybe a risk of diabetes. Um, that That's a completely different story. What we're talking about here is the mindset that it, it, that is attached to carbohydrates and losing weight. Now I'm sure that you will have also heard that uh, carbohydrates can often be categorised into good carbs and bad carbs and this basically comes from some carbohydrates are more nutritious and some carbohydrates are less nutritious some are good for the body some not so good for the body so examples of good carbohydrates quote unquote um so your more nutritious carbohydrates are things like whole grains oats potatoes quinoa fruits vegetables and then things that would be classed as bad carbohydrates, quote unquote, maybe carbs that are higher in sugar, such as white bread, pastries, cereals, and processed and refined foods, such as chocolate, crisps, that kind of thing. So it is important that, you know, if you are going to introduce carbohydrates back into your wonderful life, that you do make choices that will benefit your health and work towards your goals as well. So just as like a very quick example meal plan off the top of my head, it might be that for breakfast you have yourself a bowl of porridge, so you've got your oats in there, throw in maybe a couple of blueberries, raspberries, just to add a little bit of sweetness. And then lunchtime you may want to have something like a sandwich with whole grain bread, maybe even seeded whole grain bread with tuna and some spinach 
and then in the evening you might want to have let's say a vegetable bean curry with some whole grain brown rice I mean that's just off the top of my head and um, I'm not sure that that's going to appeal to everyone so it's important that you know you choose the food that you want to eat and that you enjoy um, and don't just take that as I must eat those foods that Emma just said because they are healthy options and there is no other choice because <laughs> that's just not how it is but my main message today really is is please do not see carbohydrates as being evil there are pros to eating a low carb diet and there are cons to eating a low carb diet and it depends on the individual so if you're doing it purely just for fat loss let me just say fat loss is a calorie deficit that is it that is the only way that you can guarantee fat loss is if you are eating in a calorie deficit so it doesn't matter whether you're having high carbohydrate whether you're having high fat as long as you're in a deficit you're eating less calories than what your body needs you're going to be losing fat now obviously with a high carb diet if you're going to be increasing your blood sugar levels this can have some impl implications and it could also trigger off cravings so it depends how you respond to carbohydrates, the type of carbohydrates that you eat that will affect your overall fat loss goals and over time. I think with any mindset shift and mindset change that it, it is going to be a process. You know, if you're still fearing the idea of eating carbohydrates and, and not feeling guilty about it, it's not just going to happen. Like you're not just going to listen to this podcast and, and everything that I have to say and you know, start eating carbohydrates again and not feel guilty. It will take some time and it is a process. So all I can advise is that you just introduce it slowly bit by bit until you found the right amount that works for you. That When you start to notice that your energy levels are going up, that you're not experiencing too much bloating and that you're able to control any of those demons inside your head at the same time. So it might be that, you know, you just start adding in a slice of whole grain toast here and there, or you have some rice or potatoes with one of your dinners or lunches. You know, just start small to begin with. And then as you start to feel more comfortable and safe with eating, you know, that amount of carbohydrates, then you can look at increasing it a little bit more. And you just you just work from there until you find what what's working for you and and what's helping you to achieve your goals because again like this podcast isn't saying that you have to eat carbohydrates and anyone that isn't eating a, a good amount of carbohydrates is bad because that's not that's not how it is at all you know you see people you know there's a lot of diets out there like the keto diet for example that do wonders for for many many people so there's nothing wrong with not eating carbohydrates. The problem is the relationship that we may have in connection to carbohydrates based purely on misinformation from the media and not fully understanding the main headlines that we see and also what we see um, on, on our own weighing scales and progress. I do feel quite passionate about it because I went through such a traumatic time in my life where I restricted food for so long and I had such a negative relationship with food that I just felt trapped. I felt so trapped every single day, like I couldn't control myself I couldn't control my actions and my emotions and I felt like there was nothing that I could do about it I was being taken over by some evil gremlins in my head that were going to control this way of thinking for the rest of my life so when I was able to break free from that and be in a position that I'm in today where I just feel free it's an incredible feeling to be able to experience after going through that time of restriction. 
So that's why I'm really passionate to make sure that people are not being misled and that they're not misinterpreting information that's being put out there of no fault of their own because again there is a lack of some responsibility to some of the information that is portrayed. But I really do hope to be able to educate people and and to help you find a way to feel safe with being able to give yourself just permission to eat these kinds of foods and to even just advise you with your health goals of how you could maybe improve or progress that a little bit further just by utilising foods in the best way and not missing out just because of a belief that you may have about a certain food that just might not even be true. Again, I understand how scary it can be to make that transition and I definitely advise just to take it one step at a time, to be patient with yourself, to allow yourself to feel these new emotions that you might have with regards to the type of food that you're eating. And again, if your goals are to be able to get stronger and you don't have any medical history or you haven't been advised by a medical professional to avoid carbohydrates or eat a low carbohydrate diet, then I definitely recommend just trying to give it a go and trying to reintroduce carbohydrates into your diet. If there's one thing that I can end this podcast on that I really want you to go away and remember is that carbohydrates do not make you fat. Eating in a calorie surplus, eating too many calories, whatever they may be, will make you fat. Eating carbohydrates will not make you fat. And so on that note, I am going to go and make a pizza and have lunch. No, I'm only joking. Although I do like pizza. But it is 11am whilst I'm recording this, so it might be a little bit too early. I really hope that you've enjoyed this podcast today. It is part three of a four-part series, Food Matters, where I'm just discussing mostly nutrition. So there's another two episodes in this series. If you hop back through the podcast episodes, you will come across these. Definitely recommend. For anyone who's really struggling with their calories specifically, um, part one is all about understanding calories and the role that they have to play on our bodies and how to utilize them best towards your goals. So that's a very valuable episode to have a listen to if you're at that point right now. And as always, just a huge shout out to all of you who show up every week, listening to the podcast, who have subscribed, means everything to me. I love being able to help people. It's my passion. I want to be able to educate people. I want to help people who have been through similar struggles that I went through and to show them that there is a new way of thinking and that there is a way to break free from all of this trapped negative energy that often accompanies that mindset. And if you can think of anyone who may benefit from listening to these episodes as well, then please do share it with them. There's only so many people that I can reach and I'm so grateful that this podcast has come across yourselves who are listening now and that you've been able to find it and hopefully get some great information from it. But there are some people who may not have come across it yet. And so sharing and referring these podcasts to your friends and family who you believe might benefit And even just people who are connected with you on social media, it just means that we're reaching more people, that we're being able to educate more people as well. So by sharing this podcast, you could be doing a wonderful thing for someone else. It's not just about me getting numbers up and things like that. I'm really not bothered. I uh, always say that this is like a hobby to me and a passion. It's something that I'm just passionate about. So I would, I will happily sit here every single week and just talk to myself if I have to, because <laughs> I just enjoy doing it. And if I can reach one person and change one person's life, then that's going to make me feel amazing. But obviously, the more people we can reach, the more lives that we can hopefully change together. So thank you again for tuning in. Really do love every single one of you. I'll be back next week for part four of this 
Food Matters series. So definitely check back in. If you haven't already subscribed, just hit the subscribe button and that just means that you'll get a notification every time a new podcast is released, which is usually a Friday at 6pm, unless I decide to throw in a cheeky little number midweek. So I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Let's hope for some more sunshine here in the UK. It's a rare sight. We've We've been very lucky this week to have some. Let's keep our fingers crossed for a little bit more. Um, And to everyone else across the, the globe, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will be back with you next week. Bye.